Today in the garage, I got a 2006 Jeep Grand Cherokee. It's here for a U-joint, the drive shaft where it connects to the uh, differential. That U-joint back there is bad, but we're gonna go ahead and replace both of them on the uh, drive shaft. Now, if I remember correctly, this car has a aluminum or aluminum drive shaft. So I don't want to use the traditional like a uh, ball joint press or even a standard press like this one right here because it's very likely that you could uh, pinch the ears on the drive shaft and just kind of ruin it. So I went ahead and bought this tool made by Lyle. It's a 42890. I took a guess on whether or not it's going to fit this car. So I guess we'll find out. This tool is supposed to press out the U-joints without applying pressure to both sides of the drive shaft and reducing the chances of bending in those ears so let me go ahead and just zip this uh, drive shaft off of the car it seems like it's pretty easy to get off so let's see if this tool fits and works i got the drive shaft off of the jeep not too bad of a job to get it off now this side moves freely up and down left to right no issues at all but we're still going to go ahead and attempt to replace this one since we're in here but this is the side that's bad first of all you can see a damaged U-joint if we look inside of here. See that? So I got it propped up right here on this tool. And left to right, that's the only movement we get. It is locked in place. That's all it moves up and down. That's all we get. And it feels very crunchy. You know what I mean? So that's it. And that's it left to right. That's crazy. So she said she was experiencing vibrations and like loud clunky noises coming from back here. And this would definitely cause that. This thing's essentially just locked up and it looks like it is gonna fit. So you can see how this works. It's gonna slide right inside of here. Gets right underneath that little ear and it helps you to press out the U-joint without putting force on both sides of these ears like a traditional uh, clamp or a uh, press would. And it's very easy to bend these parts since they're aluminum. So some of you may already know this, but uh, yeah, we have a problem here. <laughs> there are no retainer clips for these U-joints, which means they are like the uh, staked in style, which essentially means they're not supposed to be serviceable. They want you to replace the entire shaft. And if we look at the new AC Delco parts we got here, yeah, it uses the traditional clip on the outside, which this one is not equipped with that. And they do have some where, uh, you know it's like a different design to be used with something like this where they put the clip on the inside to retain the universal joint in place but that's not the part that we have here so the owner bought these parts off of rock auto i went on rock auto's website and all of them are like this they all say rear wheel drive so of course uh if you have the all-wheel drive model which this one is they are not offering new joints for it because they expect you to replace the entire drive shaft not sure what i'm going to do at the moment i don't think there is anything i can do all right so the company that makes these like special u-joints is called uh rockford and none of this stuff is off the shelf meaning you can't just go to like an auto zone or something and buy this stuff it's all from a specific company and the thing about it is they want you to take like this flange over to a machine shop and you have to cut reliefs in it like exact cuts in order to accept and retain the new uh, adapted U-joints. So that, that's a big nightmare within itself. Now I don't know if that company Rockford that sells the U-joints actually offers the flanges already pre-cut. I would have to try to do some more research and I tried going on their, on their website but I couldn't find anything but I, I guess I would have to dig a little bit deeper. At any rate, it turned, it, it, it's looking like it's a ton of hassle to get this job done. And if you were to go to the dealer, this drive shaft costs over $800. I can tell you right now, the owner is not gonna be paying no $800 for a freaking drive shaft. She'd rather turn her four x four into a two x two. <laughs> That's stupid. What I mean is turn her four x four into a front wheel drive. Uh, so yeah, basically leave this thing off of the car because it doesn't make sense to put it back on because this U-joint is obviously destroyed and it's only gonna cause more harm than good. Now, if we go look underneath the car, it's not really a big deal to leave this thing off and I'll show you why. On the differential side, you can see it still has the flange going into the differential and it has a nut right there holding it in place, meaning that thing is not gonna fly off. And since the flange is still pushed into the differential, it's still sealed, it's not gonna leak anything. 
And pretty much the same exact thing if we come to the front over here, the transfer case. We got our nut, so you know this flange is not gonna come off. And the flange is actually what's sealing inside of here, so nothing's gonna leak. So by leaving this drive shaft off, there's really no downsides besides you no longer have all wheel drive. You, your car would just be front wheel drive and that's about it. I'm pretty sure that's the route the owner is gonna wanna go cause she is not gonna pay no $800 for a freaking drive shaft. Let me go ahead and change out that differential fluid back there. Only because this thing has a good amount of miles. Let's go check how many miles on it. All right, so it looks like this bad boy has just over 163,000 miles on it. And I can guarantee you that it has never had the transfer case and differential fluid service. And the owner brought up to me that on the way over here, she said the oil light came on and started flashing. All kinds of stuff started to beep on the dash. So she wants me to check the oil and see what else is going on. Now this car has a crazy oil consumption problem. Ever since she bought it a few months ago, it's always been like this. She said she'll do an oil change and within a week, this thing is beeping its face off saying that it has no oil. And sure enough, she's driving around with no oil even after a week of doing an oil change. Isn't that crazy? So that's how fast this thing is going through oil. Whether, um, I don't know if it's leaking or it's burning it or whatever the heck is going on with it. But the point is that it is a massive oil consumption problem. So I'm just going to go ahead and check the oil for her and make sure it's not low. I'm pretty sure it is anyway. But the main thing is let's go ahead and knock out this differential fluid. Not going to lie guys, I'm kind of disappointed because I bought this tool specifically for this job. Okay, so I mean I guess I could always return it to Amazon. Uh, but I like tools so I might just hold on to it and who knows it might be useful in the future. Now I do have one bolt still up there. Someone's been in here before. This is all silicone. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a gasket from factory. Oh, it stings so good. It's not as uh, dark as I was expecting. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe someone has been in here before the owner bought the car. I, I expected it to just be like just ton of like black tar goop, but that's not the case. All right, so maybe I wasn't wrong about the fluid being old. This is brand new gear oil and I got a light behind both of the containers. And this is a sample of what we just took out of the differential. You can see the difference. The light almost does not want to penetrate through this fluid. Look how nasty it is compared to new stuff. Another thing is, so there goes the differential cover right there. And at the bottom of this thing, there is like a magnet to collect any type of uh, metal debris. And look how caked on this stuff is. Look at this. You know, if it was serviced not too long ago where someone had this dip cover off, you would think that they would clean all this crap off of here, right? So uh, that's a pretty good amount of buildup. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean off all this RTV clean off all that crap off of the magnet and uh, as well as the cover will get all this set up and ready to go back together. As you can see I got all that orange silicone removed. The mating surface has been prepped. It's nice cleaned and dry as well as a cover. You can see I spent a good amount of time cleaning all this stuff up. Everything is nice and dry now ready to accept the new gasket we are not using silicone it's just going to get a standard gasket and it should seal right up and here goes our new gasket all of the mounting holes seem to line up so everything looks real good i'm going to be using this uh loctite stick which is basically a high tech stick it's not a rtv or anything like that it's it's really just a uh think of it like a glue stick to hold the gasket in place and that's all it's really for so I like this stuff, it works pretty well, but damn does it stink. So I got the new gasket in place and uh, that high tack stuff, I like to put it on both sides of the gasket. So I put it on the actual plate and now the gasket is stuck to it and then I put a very thin layer on the outside. I don't know, it's just a habit of mine and I seem to get pretty good results like this. It always seals, I don't have a single leak afterwards. And the way it is right now, this gasket, guys, is not going anywhere. You can go upside down, inside out. It's like the freaking Wonka Vader. Sideways, up, down, it doesn't matter. It's not going to fall off. So let's go ahead and put this thing back on the differential. It should be all set. So the cover went on perfectly. No hiccups at all. All of the bolts are torqued down. And now I'm just pumping new gear oil into the differential. So let me go ahead and keep doing this until it starts to drip out of this hole right here. 
and we'll be all set. We are just about done. You can see it's starting to drip out of the cover right there. It pretty much took two bottles of this stuff and it got us right up to the full mark. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my mess and we'll put the plug right back on this thing. <laughs> I'm sure some of you already know you were yelling at the screen and laughing. Well, it turns out this car will not drive without the drive shaft because the rear wheels are its primary <laughs> drivetrain. The, the front wheels would be the added on 4x4. So if you remove the drive shaft, the car simply won't move. And that's what's going on here. I went to put it in reverse, the car doesn't move. All right, so I put the drive shaft back on the car, guys. There's no way around it. This thing needs a new drive shaft, even if it is expensive. That's just how it has to get done. Um, so I'm here checking the oil like I said I would and this thing is bone dry guys I cleaned it off reinserted it and like there is nothing on this dipstick That's why she's getting the oil warning light and She claims that she got an oil change about a week ago So I don't have any new oil here, but I do have used oil It came out of my personal car and I use full synthetic and I change it every 5,000 miles right on the dot uh, so the oil that's going in this one is relatively decent oil It's not like oil that came out of someone's car that uh, the car always gets neglected. You know what I mean? Um, so it's it's fairly decent oil that I'm going to be putting into this one I remember guys used oil is better than no oil the oil level now on the dipstick. It's right at the full mark This thing took a full five quarts <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, so let me go ahead and put all this stuff back together take it out for a test drive uh, just make sure that the rear differential isn't leaking and that's going to be it for this one.